I promise you today's video is a video that you're going to need no matter where you are in your journey, your financial journey or your financial walk of life. OK, as you guys know, my background is in finance before YouTube. I worked at a financial office for a few years and I just have my fair share of information in that area and a lot I've learned. And I had firsthand experience of being in different circles to kind of bring what I am bringing to you guys here today. So what we're talking about is the five things that poor people, when I say poor people, <laughs> I'm talking about the state of mind, okay? Because poverty is a state of mind. It is a state of mind. I talk about wealth, it is a state of mind also. And I'm going to be really clear on what I mean by that as we get further into the video. But this is what I mean. I don't necessarily mean somebody who's homeless or have nothing or anything like that. Because there's a lot of rich people who are very poor and who are terrible with money and they end up in terrible situations. We can use even and MC Hammer, not now, but you know, when he first got in, that was a rich person who just, you know, and a lot of your fave rappers and social media influencers, etc. Yeah, they got the money, but they definitely have the poor mindset. Okay. So this is what I mean by that. So today's video is five things that poor people waste money on. But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Queen Allude Mental Gems. This channel is dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Now, Without further ado, let's get into this video. Let's first start with number one, which is online courses and coaching from others. And I know this one may sound a little controversial, especially when you're here on YouTube. A lot of people sell their courses and stuff like that. I'm not knocking everyone who does that because a lot of people that do provide the service, they present, provide it in a reasonable prices. And they also really are giving you a service that you cannot get for free on here on YouTube. But there's a lot of people that's conning you guys that are trying to get you guys to buy a service or purchase something where they're scamming you in a sense because you could literally go on YouTube and find the information for free. There's nothing you can't find the information for free here on YouTube. Even if you wanted to build your own house, you could probably learn how to do that on YouTube or a rocket ship, okay? And not just that, but purchasing books is another way that you can do that for cheaper. And what I mean by that is also coaching services. There's a lot of people that will spend a lot of money on going like thousands of dollars, I kid you not, to go hear a certain speaker speak when the speaker have way more information in their book where you could have just purchased their book, have it on Audible, and they have better tips, etc., or just purchase certain books and it'll be more free for you. I remember when I was first starting YouTube, I'll give you guys an example. When I first started YouTube, there were people that were offering for you to pay classes. Well, I fell for this scam once and I was like, no, where there was this company and I was like, come to us, pay this. Um, um, if you come to us, we'll do everything for you. Da, da, da. They just get a cut and they'll teach you everything. And I was coming into YouTube very blind, honey, very blind. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll make it easier for me when nah, it's just not the way to go. And there's people that were offering for you to pay a service so they can teach you how to start your YouTube channel, teach you what to use, etc. blah, blah, blah. I just was like, I could learn this myself. I started to go, I think one of the channels that I, um, the first channels I saw was Think Media. And I just went to subscribe to Think Media, watch all their videos. I promise you that channel has everything free plug for them. But listen, they have everything you need to know to start a YouTube channel. And so many people have so much valuable information on here to do it, where people was charging like four or $500 to go do it. So this is why I'm always weary of that. Even on this channel, I'm like, if I'm going to sell you guys something, which I never do on this channel or my other channels, any of my channels, I stay away from that. Everybody's like, why you don't do this, that, or, you know, more promotions. It's just not my vibe. I don't do that. I don't believe in it, but I also will never try to sell you guys a product. If I can give the service for free, YouTube is already paying me. I'm not saying not to make your living or whatever, but I rather put something in a book and sell the book to you guys. Then you, you get what I'm saying. So a lot of money is wasted because it is a billion dollar industry. It is a multi-billion dollar industry, the self-help industry, the coaching industry, the class, the apps. It is a multi-billion dollar industry where everybody wants to cut a piece of the pie. And a lot of people are falling for it and you're spending so money, investing so much of your money into those things and you're not making it. So a lot of wealthy people know they rather, wealthy people, what they do, they'll sell you those courses to make more money. Because a lot of times that's how they make all that money is from selling your courses. But they themselves, you will never see them falling into the trap of 
paying to go hear a speaker or do this, whatever, unless it's like a workshop or something that directly links to their industry where you're learning like the scientific community or you have the, the in, um, architectural community, the um, technology community, they have speakers for their specific field where they're working on and they're showing them new innovative products and stuff like that. They'll pay for stuff like that and master classes in those industries, but to like be motivated, Ugh, please, no, no, that's what I mean by that. Number two, designer clothes, wasting money on it. Most are made in factories for less than five cents and they sell it to you for 5K because of the logo, okay? Many people have come out with that also. And in my travels, when you go to like a fashion house, like I know in Paris, there was a lot of fashion houses that you go to in behind the scenes. Let me tell you how they do their products you could find even a better quality from even Ross or something for some of these bags and stuff where they just put a label on it and a serial number. Now there are products that I'm gonna get into that that are made with authentic leather and it's real diamonds or it's real gold. It will you know appreciate in value in the future and stuff. But I'm not talking about like a basic bag or stuff like that just because of the logo. You're walking out of it, it looks ridiculous, and that's why you see most wealthy people because there's tears to this with a wealthier mindset will not not overspend their money on products just because of a label. It, it just doesn't make sense, right? Number three is credit cards. And you have to be very careful of that I was a victim of that in my first college years where you want to go on a trip. If you cannot afford it, please do not get a credit card to go on trips. Do not get a credit card to go buy luxury items. Do not get a credit card to put on anything, okay? If you cannot purchase something with liquid crash, at least twice, don't purchase it. I'm talking about major purchases, right? Like you might be tripping right now. You got $5 to your name. Me and my roommate, we was broke, broke. <laughs> we like dig through the couch for change to put gas in the car. You know, of course get gas. I'm not talking about that. But if you're going to buy a purse and you can't afford to purchase that purse twice, don't get it. Don't put it on your credit card unless you know you're going to have that money to pay it right then and there avoid that. But a lot of people swipe, swipe, swipe. They don't see it as anything for them to accumulate a lot of credit card um, debt. And then even if they end up paying it, that interest be so high that you're paying triple or quadruple times what you ended up spending. And a lot of times when I have young couples that will come and purchase their first home, when I used to do credit repair with them and credit building and stuff, when I would do financial planning with them, you would see that most of their biggest debts, aside from student loans, of course, and hospital bills was always credit cards. And it was when they first got married, they would just swipe and swipe and swipe in. And it took, it takes forever to, to get that off your debt when you're trying to purchase your first home, move out of the apartment or whatever. And that's like a sneaky little thing, people. That's like a, it holds you on a chokehold because your credit your credit score, credit score is a huge deal in America and your credit score can really mess up just from credit cards. You have to be very, very careful with that, okay? And even rich people get into that too. It's not just being below the poverty guideline for the state of Florida. I think to be below the poverty guideline, you're making less than 28,000 or something like that than your um, a year. But even wealthy people, if they get a platinum card or a black card or certain gold cards or whatever, then they go all crazy. Oh, okay, I got this platinum card. It feels good to go into Prada and just swipe, 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 swipe. And you gotta pay that back, honey. You got to pay back and they don't play about that. They will keep sending you them alerts and messages. American Express don't play that, okay? So please do not get yourself into that debt. Number four is going out too much, going out too much. I always say this, if you're, especially if you're below the poverty guideline, you're making less than 30K a year for the state of Florida, whatever your state is, um, figure out what the poverty guideline is for your state. But if you're making less than $28,000, especially if you're in the state of Florida, there's no reason why you should be at the clubs every weekend. You should be going out to eat every week. You should be like, no, sit your butt home and work. It's something Haitian parents used to always say that it's be so annoying. Every time they're like, let's go to the movies, you ask your parents, they say, movies are for people who are rich. <laughs> it's a toxic state of mind. Of course, enjoy yourself. But it was something that I grew up knowing that fun, you have fun when you're good. Even when me, even now in my older age, I have the discipline when I know I need to grind, I need to make a certain amount of money, you'll get temptations. You have, whether it's your boyfriend or your husband, that's like, let's go quick get away. Let's go away for three days this week or whatever. You're like, we got a budget. We got stuff to do. We have, we, we ain't made these funds yet. You got to hone in some discipline and not try to really do too much, even though sometimes, you know, it's good for you, but it's, it's better to save a budget for that than to be out all week, you know, wasting money that you earned a lot. Imagine, look at it this way. If you're getting paid even $20 an hour, okay, you're getting paid $20 an hour and you're working at least 40 hours a week, okay? Now, and you go to the club, 
everything you purchase, calculate that by hours. If the drink, it costs you $40 to drink that night or $100, think about that. That was five hours of me working that just paid for the drinks tonight. Five hours. And some of you guys make less than 20 an hour. So when you're at the club, you spend $100 buying drinks for girls. Think of this. This five hours of my work day that I just spent on somebody that's not even going to hold home with me at the end of the night. Look at it that way in terms of expenses every time. That's how I used to calculate it when I started getting my stuff together. Every time I'm making a purchase, when I used to get paid hourly, I was just like, okay, let me calculate it by hours. Then the stuff starts to look like it's not worth it, even if it's a shirt <laughs> that you're buying at H&M. You're like, this shirt is $22. I am out here making $11 an hour. That is two hours that I'm about to purchase this shirt with. It's not worth it. Mm -mm. Then you'll find you put it down and then you'll go for the cheaper option or look for something that, that is more durable. But, you know, you, you, you value your money. Look at it that way. Number five is substance and substance use, drugs, our home, the Mayor Jane, all that. I always say one of the things I used to get me is when we do financial planning with someone, like I used to have all types of people that come in and you'd have, it's, it's always the young people. <laughs> I have my young people come in and they're learning about credit and stuff for the first time. And one of the main things when we're talking about their budget, when they're working on a plan to get their first car or their first house or whatever, it's like the number one thing that you'll find out spurred on is alcohol and weed. And I'm like, you're making below the poverty guideline. You should not have a budget for weed. You should not have a budget for weed. You should not have a budget for alcohol. Sorry guys, my camera got cut off and I didn't even realize and I was just rambling on. <laughs> but I didn't say much too much. I just wanna wrap this up by saying, yeah, you should not have a budget for, for illicit substances and things like that. You just shouldn't have a budget for certain things when you're not there yet. You know, I know when you're young, you don't really know that. I mean, I've been there. I used to have budget for shoes. Budget for shoes. I couldn't even eat or put gas in my car, but I had a budget for shoes. So I definitely know what it's like to not have your priorities in order. And this is what I mean. Have your priorities in order. If things are not working out for you yet and you're not where you need to be, you definitely don't need a leisure fund yet. You don't need any sort of leisure. I know that sounds pretty harsh, but there's people that had to grind. Like for me, I had to focus for a good two to three years being a homebody, not going anywhere, just to focus on now I can play harder. If I can play harder now, it's because of those two to three years where there was no leisure for me, there was no relaxation. I just focused and made sure all my resources were benefiting me and going towards things that was gonna make my future a little bit more comfortable. And I know people don't wanna hear that because we're all about self-care and have fun, live a little and things like that. But this advice is definitely for people who are really, really down and out. You know, if you're really down and out and you're going through the couch looking for a pain and stuff to put gas on or there's not even a dollar menu anymore so if you're you know looking for ramen every night to eat I don't think you should have a leisure fund that's just me and just focus until you get to that point but this is all I have for this video comment below anything else you guys would like to add and what other type of videos you guys would want I love you guys so much thank you for tuning in until next time